take it for granted. Uh, because one word can destroy somebody's life. And so I do not take it lightly at all for the opportunity given me. And um, I want to thank um, the apostle and his beautiful wife for the invitation and also the leadership. Thank you for the great work you guys are doing here. It's amazing to know that you are not even 10 years yet. And the thing that you can clap for yourself. It's, a, it's allowed, amen. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, one of the things I like about him is the level of excellence. It's wonderful. Amen. And once you walk into this place, it's all over. And uh, he's reproducing after himself. I look at you and I can tell that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. One thing I would like to say before we get into the word is that um, I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Okay? Don't give up. Don't give up. One thing you have to understand about the two of them is that they are humans. They'll make mistakes. If he hasn't made any mistake yet, just hold on tight. He will make a mistake. When that happens, don't vote with your feet as it were and leave. Says, I have been around this thing for so long and sometimes one of the saddest things is that the people that you give everything for are the people who walk away from you in your store. Please don't leave. He's a man before he became a man of God. You understand what I'm saying? So, I encourage you and sometimes sometimes listen this thing we are doing you have no idea it's warfare the enemy is after us and so sometimes those of you who know us when you go to a place and they are saying all kinds of negative things about your shepherd and the first lady those of you who know rise up and speak up listen to me it is said that the only thing necessary for evil to perpetuate itself is for good men to sit and do nothing. You know, sometimes people come to you and say, Pastor, I was at this party and I was this place and this conference and people were saying this after about you and saying that after me. I said, I keep quiet and listen. When they are done, I just look at them and I don't care what they said about me. I care about what you said in my defense because they don't know me, but you do. So my question is, what did you say? It doesn't matter to me what they said, but it matters to me what you did. Amen. So support him. Don't let him become bow legged. You know bow legged pastors. See the pastor and he's walking like that. You think he's bow, but when you check his shoes, it is the shoe that is worn out. What I'm saying is that take care of him. Don't wait until you are in need before you find out where his phone number is. Call them and check on them. Don't forget their anniversary. Don't forget his birthday. It is a very lonely thing to be at the top. You have no idea. So please hang in there with them and don't give up. Especially those of us with this king. We don't know what it means to hang on with people. I've said to people, don't call me your friend until I have been through my storm and you stood with me. Then you can call me a friend. Because there are fair weather friends. They are there with you when it's... Listen, I say to people, can I be myself or so forth? Yes. We are talking, we are talking. Anybody can ride with me when I'm riding in the, in the limousine. I want to know who will still walk with me when the limousine breaks down. Amen. Amen. Support the ministry with your time, with your resources, your finances. Be there when you are needed. One of the, especially in the charismatic, one of the things, you, when you travel a lot, a, a bit, you hear a, few, a lot of things. You know, people will talk about, as for pastor, I like him, it is his wife, I can't stand. It's witchcraft. I promise you, it's witchcraft. If you love me, you love me and my dog. It has nothing, you don't have to, listen, are you, are you so, so, 
See, because of the mask, I can't read your instructions. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't worry, I'll get out of your hair in a little bit. But I, I, brought, I brought a few copies of a book I wrote recently. It's a setup. It's a setup. Principles for surviving the storms. And uh, your know, pastor will tell you where to get it. But I brought a few copies and I encourage you to get one. Amen. How many of you like to read? Hey, even if you don't like a cry, you should have listed your hand though. Because maybe there's some boy looking around, looking for a wife, and look and say she doesn't like to read. Just lift up your hand and let him think you read. Amen. I encourage you to get one. It's a good book. Trust me. I know you have heard many people come here talk about books, but this is a good. And it's a very sh- less than hundred pages. And if for nothing at all, there's a very beautiful picture at the back. If you don't want to, just because of the picture, get one. <laughs> Amen. Because of our time, I want to get right into it. But please, I encourage you to get one. I encourage you to get one. You let the worship, please. This is for you. The one thing the book doesn't like is not to be read. If you buy it and you don't read it at night you are sleeping it will get up and slap you so, so you, better, you better read it amen, amen. you know so for, I read at least four books every month at least because as a young man I read one day somebody said that if you want to hide something from the black man hide it in a book and I said me nobody will hide anything from me so I read anything from archaeology to zoology. Anything. So read, please. Read it. And I, I promise you it will help you. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Yeah. All right. Let's turn our Bibles real quickly to Psalm 107, verse 21 and 22. 107, verse 21 and 22. If you are able, can you please rise for the reading of God's word. I just like to, for us to stand um, in honor to God for his word. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Can you please bow down your heads and let us pray. Immortal and invisible God, ever-present God, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. This is the day you have made, a day perfect by your own creative standards. We thank you that we are your people. We thank you that you are not ashamed to call us your own. Father, this morning we stand in your divine presence and we ask that you bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that you bless me to speak the word of wisdom today. Inform us transform us, restore us. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit articulate divinity in the midst of your people today. I pray that, oh God, we are in this world, but we are in need of you. We are victims of decay. We are victims of mortality. We are victims of limitations. Let your Holy Spirit today articulate wisdom in the hearts of your people. And I pray, oh Lord God, that if you can use anything, you can use me. I am ready, oh God, use me like the pen of a skillful writer. Wear me like a cloak this morning and minister to your people. I pray that no one under the sound of my voice will live here the same way they came in. Whether they are watching us by way of the cyber, uh, 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 the internet, in the, in, the, in the cyber audience, wherever they are connecting with us from all over the world, we pray that somebody will receive a rima word. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, reach somebody. Forgive us, oh Lord, for all our ignorance. Forgive us, oh God, for our ingratitude. Uh, forgive Forgive us for taking your blessings for granted. Forgive us, oh God, for the sin of ingratitude. I thank you for your presence here. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can you please be seated? I want to speak on the subject, the spirit of thanksgiving. The spirit of thanksgiving. I want to address this very important subject because I feel like it is a subject that has been neglected, uh, especially among charismatics and Pentecostals 
we have done a lot with the Holy Ghost. We've done a lot with, you know, uh, how to make it in life. We've done a lot about how to encourage and motivate people to rise up out of mediocrity and to become uh, uh, agents of change. We have done that and, uh, and I applaud the church for that. But, uh, but there, is, there is one, one of the, I believe that one of the greatest sins of the past and one of the greatest sins of today's generation is the sin of ingratitude. G.K. Chesterton says this. She called gratitude, he says, it's the mother of all virtues. One of the most significant changes that Jesus wants to make in our hearts and in our lives is to transform us into a people who are continually grateful. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord, not sometimes, not when things are good, but I'll bless the Lord how many times? At all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34. Many a times we take the provisions of God for granted. Many a times we take the salvation of God for granted. Many a times we take the daily provisions of God for granted. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let us not take what God has done for us for granted. Any waking day of our lives, we must thank God that he woke us up. Listen, there are some people who went to bed last night and they never made it. Are you here with me? They never got back up. Let me share with somebody. It wasn't the alarm clock on your phone that woke you up. It wasn't the alarm clock going off that woke you up. You can put a golden alarm clock by a dead body and let's see how wonderful your alarm clock is. So it was not your phone which woke you up. It was grace and mercy that was extended towards you. You are alive today not because we have done anything right or because we are wonderful. You are alive today not because of your degree or your pedigree. You are alive today not because you are wonderful or handsome. Even though you are, we are alive today because we are living on somebody's borrowed mercy. If you are alive today, you've got two hands and two feet. You have two eyes and two ears to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are watching us from, put those hands together and give God praise and give God thanks for the simple fact that you are here. The psalmist calls us and he says, let men everywhere give thanks unto the Lord. He says, why? He says, for his goodness and for his mercy. Can you add a shout to it as you praise God this morning? Give God praise. Are you hearing me? Can we have church this morning? Yeah. Just give thanks to God for his, he says for his goodness, for his goodness. Listen, you ought to come to a place where you thank God even for the prayers he said no to. Because some of you, if he had allowed that man to marry you, you would have been the most miserable person on earth. Listen, it was good he walked away. It was good he rejected you because it was the rejection of men that brought God closer to your life. It was when men walked away that the friend that sticks closer than a brother walked into your life. Listen, don't ever think that God has made a mistake with your life. He has never made a mistake and so whatever God is doing, listen, one thing you've got to resolve within yourself today is that no matter what you are going through, God is good. You got to wake up every waking day of your life and have a song upon your lips. Are you hearing me somebody? The psalmist writes and he says, let men everywhere give thanks to the Lord. And he gives them, he says, because of his goodness and because of his mercy. Onyami wasida yeh baby. Onyami wasida yeh baby. Be free me move. Eni makume. Onyami wasida ye bebre Onyami wasida ye bebre Minyami wasida ye bebre Be free me mu Ani makuma Onyami wasida ye bebre Onyami wasida ye bebre Onyami wasida ye are you understanding what I'm saying? Please sit down, please sit down. Please. I just want to talk to us this morning. He says, let's give thanks to God for the God that we are talking about is good. There's a story of a king who had his best friend and they were hunting buddies and so they would go hunting together. 
And one day, his friend, who also happens to be his servant, made a mistake when he was preparing the gun. And so when the king took the gun to fire at an animal, the thing went backwards and blew his thumb. And this servant, anytime anything happens, he will look at the king, he will look at humanity and say, God is good. And so when this happened, he looked at the king and said, King, God is good. And the king said, you must be crazy. You just blew my thumb and you are saying God is good. The king was so angry, he put his friend in jail. And for a long period of time, the friend was there. So one day, the king went on hunting expeditions again. And of course, his friend is in jail, so he didn't go with him. And not knowing the route and the terrain very well, he ended up in the midst of some cannibals. They took him, tied him up to sacrifice him to the gods. And when they put him on the altar to kill him, they realized that his thumb was gone. And they said, listen, it is an insult to give any incomplete thing to our God. You are not worthy to be sacrificed to the gods. So they released him and said, get out of here and go your way. He came home and went straight to jail and he said, release my friend. Because today I have realized that indeed God is good. Because but for my thumb. And then he looked at his friend. His friend said, he apologized to his friend. He said, I am sorry that I put you in jail. His friend said, please don't apologize. God is still good. He said, how can you say God is good after what I've done to you? Put you in jail for something it was, it was, which was a mistake. For all these months you have been in jail. And you are still telling me God is good. He said, hey king, in case you have forgotten. If I had not been in jail, I would have gone on the expedition with you. And in case you haven't realized, I have all my fingers. He said, brother, what are you saying? He said, you know what? You would have been an unworthy sacrifice, but I would have been perfect for them. It is good you kept me in jail. Listen, it is good God did what he did in your life. It is good he didn't do what he didn't do. It is good, it is good. Somebody shout, God is good. The psalmist said, oh, and I like the way, he said, oh, let men everywhere give thanks to God for his goodness. Please sit down, please sit down, please sit down. We are alive today, we are here today, we are alive today, not as a result of who we are. It is not as a result of any achievement. Not as a result of anything we may or may not have done. I want somebody to understand before you walk out of here that we are alive and well as a result of the goodness of God and only by the mercies of Almighty God. Many a times as a people we forget about the grace of God. Peter and them were talking about Paul and, and they talked about how wonderful his exposition is. And they talk about that Peter even talks about that. He said, even though I'm a pillar of the church, uh, this our brother Apostle, talk, Apostle Paul talks about things that are beyond my understanding. And Paul looks at them and says, hey, hold on. I am what I am by the grace of God. I don't know about you. But listen, until you get to that reality and that realization, you will become proud and arrogant. Thinking that you are gifted. Thinking that you got something. Thinking that, listen, until you get to the point where you realize that your ability to stand on a stage like this and sing is only by the grace of God. Not because you are better and gifted more than anybody. Listen, trust me, you don't have to accept this reality. I have traveled, this two feet has seen enough nations to let you know that there are better singers than you. When you realize that you will never become arrogant and you will never think that you are doing this church a, a, a service. So we should lift you up. People have the audacity to think that without them, church cannot go. You try God. He will replace you with something better than you. The one thing, if you don't get anything I'm sharing with you today, the one thing I want you to get today, and one thing I want you forever to remember, anytime my name comes up in your mind, I want you to remember this point, that, listen, don't forget to remember. The reason we are ungrateful is because we are very, listen, we have temporary amnesia. We forget the reason why David is such an awesome worshiper is that David never forgot where God brought him from. Let me tell you something for free. Listen, between Saul and David, Saul was a better human being than David. 
The things that Saul did, David would not even dream of doing. And yet God looks after man and says, it's a man after my own heart. The murderer, the, listen. When they were looking for Saul to make him king, Bible says he was hiding in the sheaf. When he became king and the prophet Samuel was looking for him, they told Samuel that he has gone into the cities to build monuments unto himself. Don't ever forget to remember. Listen, you drive the car you drive today. Not because you worked hard. People are working harder than you. You are married today not because you are the most beautiful person at the house of consecration. You look around. Are, are you still here with me? There are more beautiful women than you who are single. You are married because of the grace of God. Listen, when you realize this reality, you will be humble. A man who knows God is humble, but a man who knows himself cannot be proud. You want me to repeat that? A man who knows God is humble, but a man who knows himself can't be proud. See, you travel to places, you do ministration and things, and the anointing is powerful. And people start giving you all kinds of accolades. So I go to him and they talk, he's a great man of God. Me. I'm not a great man. I'm an ordinary man who serves a great God. It is God who is great. You, I tell you, listen, because until you realize, the reason why we become so arrogant and we become so ungrateful is because we, we forget where he picked us from. I'm telling you, if you will, that is why David is such an amazing character. Because David never forgot that he was at the backside of the wilderness. He knew that even his family members forgot about him and this God remembered him. And he never forgot that. And so when he was dancing and giving glory to God and his wife looked at him and said, you know what? Why were you so embarrassing yourself before the, he said before the girls. It wasn't the girls who, it was before Jehovah God who took your father away and made me king. I haven't forgotten it. It was in, before him that I was dancing. Do you know where he brought you from? Or because now you have a mansion so you forgot that once upon a time you were sleeping in a kiosk. God, God has been so good to us. You don't know. This boy standing here declare. Listen, I preach the way I preach. Not because I am gifted. I preach because it is my gratitude to Jehovah God. Because he could have picked anybody else and he picked me. You have no idea where I'm coming from. A village boy like me. Even to speak English, it was a problem. Listen to me. If you will come to a place where you will remember where God picked you up from, I promise you, you will always have a grateful heart. Se a brown boy, a moon sun. Yeah, yeah, my wife. Now, wow, wow, If he said, I own a man, I know. I remember. I said, Yeah, oh, see. we ready. Because listen, Abraboy will send me here and my baby. One of these days, God will remember you. God will turn your story around. God will pick you out of the merry claim and you will set your feet on a solid rock. Your story is going to change one of these days. When that happens, don't forget. If he said, Write and say 
say, oh, give thanks. You guys stay right there because that is just the way I minister. This I'm going to go back and forth. Mommy, David sits in his cedar paneled house and he looks through the window and he sees the ark of God which signifies the presence of God sitting under a tent being bombarded by the elements of nature the sun, the rain and everything and he looks at it and David sits and says there is something wrong with this picture that I will live in a cedar paneled house and the presence of God sitting under a tent he says you know what he called the prophet and said Lord I want to build a house for God The prophet says, go ahead and do it. On his way, God said, go back and tell David, his hand is so filled with blood, he cannot build for me. If it was me and you, Sofu, and I want to find a place for you to live, and you don't want me to build. But, but David said, God, I want to do something. Whatever Solomon will need to build a temple, I want to provide it before Solomon comes. And then God comes to David and says, David, because of this, I'm going to establish it. Listen, there is something you can do for the kingdom of God that will cause God to enter into a covenant with you. That your children's children's children will come. Listen, when God entered into covenant with David, David's children came and they messed up. And God looked at someone and said, I can't touch you because I made your father a promise. His son came and he blew it. He said, I still can't touch you. I made a promise to your grandfather. That there is something you can do in this church that will cause generation to benefit from you. God said, I can't touch you, but pastor, that is not even my interest. David came. The Bible said he sat before God. And he said, Ain't me pa mini. Now I am saying, Oh, it will Ain't he me pa? Oh, now why am I saying? Everybody, everybody. Some of you, that is your story. Was the sun in you? Now was the sun in the shepherd? Hey, was the sun in the dear ashes for what they say? David said, What's <laughs> There are people here today when we talk about let's give something to build for the kingdom of God you start complaining, you start remembering you start talking about all kinds of negative things about the church just because you don't want to give the only reason you are doing that is because you are forgetting the fact that once upon a time you didn't even have a job and out of this ministry through a prophetic word from the man of God God opened a door for you that you didn't even qualify for there are some of you sitting under the sound of my voice you owe your very future you owe your very present to this house lift up your voice give God praise and shout to the glory of God I haven't dealt with my point I'll, I'll get to it in the second service because, Pastor, for me and my family, you have no idea where God prays. I mean, my own uncle will look at us and look at us and say, he's, he's look at, he tells my mom, his own sister, he said, 
and, and he says in a local language, one woman, on better truck, I will need my own uncle, and he had money to help us. But I thank God ah. that he didn't help us. Because of our boy, it was because he didn't help us. And we kept fighting, and we kept believing God, and we kept praying, and we kept serving, and we kept serving, and we kept loving God. God remembered us, lifted us up. up. Hey! upon a time see some of you talk about hard you don't even know what the hard looks like how many of you went to the airport those years not this new one there was a long steep step you have to climb to get to the airport you see all this way they used to call us goro boys we we're holding boxes with cookies chocolate cigarettes we were selling at the airport, people descending from the airplanes will sell to them. And people will insult you like you have no blood in you. Say, okay, listen, that is why you can never ever come to a place where you think you are so big that you look down on anybody else because you don't know when the garage boy will become president. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Have a few minutes, I'll wrap up. And so it was, and, 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 and and we ourselves if somebody had told us that God will do what he has done me, I wouldn't have believed it I'm telling you yourself, I'm telling you I'm not here to make you, make you think any less of me or anything but I promise God that if he lifts me up, I will let the world know it was him I owe it all to Jesus God has blessed us you know, also God has blessed We are we are blessed. Right. Let me just put it that, that we are we are blessed. We are so blessed, eh? So it's so amazing and so miraculous that people can't believe how blessed we are. Because we were so poor, poor people were calling us poor. We were so poor, we didn't have the letters to spread the word poor. Talking about poverty. Poverty where you are writing all levels and the whole school registration is being held because we are the auditorium. And today, listen, let me, let me just, how many of you heard of the PDS thing, the electricity corporation thing and all the chaos and all of that? The boy who was trying to buy the thing, Philip Ayesu, you know the last name. He's my brother. Comes right after me. People say, where did he get all these millions to buy this? Because where we are coming from, they couldn't associate us with millions. Mm, tough, mm, 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 mm. Mm. So it was in the papers. They said, ah, this barber. Only because he owns, you know, the point I'm trying to establish is this. If you forget where he picked you up from and you forget that it was he who has brought you this far, you will be ungrateful. You'll be ungrateful. You'll be ungrateful. You'll be ungrateful. You'll be ungrateful. Don't forget to remember don't forget, in the second service, I'll deal with my points. I have four points. But don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. And yeah, when I went to the United States, even the belt I was wearing also was my sister's belt, a my belt. Today I can buy any belt. Oh, 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 oh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I'm not uh, I'm not being braggadocious or anything. I'm not uh -uh. I'm just saying to the glory of God. And it wasn't because we are smart to suffer. I am still not together. But that is the beauty of it. That God will pick a nobody and do something great out of your life. I remember, can I share one more story with you and I'll walk out of you? One day, one day, suffer, one day I was at the airport selling with this. This one lady coming from Italy, Air Alitalia. 
See, not disrespect anybody from if your relatives are Italy or you come from Italy or something, but she's coming from Italy. Me, I'm selling. Just buy. If you won't buy, I just walk away. Me, I'm on trip. She pushed me. My Coca Cola, everything, only my soul, all down the stairs. Everything was broken all over the place. I just sat there and I cried. A young boy. I was crying. And today, when I land at any airport, and people are there, and I'm just giving money out. So it's not because I don't know what to do with money. It's just that I've been there before. And I remember. Remember. A young man, when I landed a few, a young man that was helping with my thing, I was just giving him my money. He said, $50, $100. He said, Hey, Papa, I'm son. I'm saying, Don't worry. Baby, will be a free buyer. That's a wrong. He was worried that he might not get his blessing. I said, Don't worry. I said, Ube me do bro, you And it's not because I have so much money, I don't know. I know what to do with money. I'm just grateful. I remember where he picked me up from. And I remember that once upon a time, that boy was me. Shut no, we free. Because that is the, the, the that is what creates ingratitude in the hearts of men. You forget. Some of you, maybe if it wasn't because of this man and this woman, your marriage would have been shattered. Maybe just one word from this pulpit into the Ukunda Sotel. But then we forget so easily. And then you stand somewhere and denigrate him and say all kinds of things about him. And sometimes you are talking about your pastor, and people wonder, who are you? Is that your pastor? You know the reason why we do that? We are forgetful. Forgetful. Oh! That man everywhere will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Listen to me as I wrap up. If you don't know anything about this God, I want you to know this, that God is good. I want you to know that God is what? God is good. Amen. And so wherever you are right now, let's see, wherever you are right now, God is not through with you yet. Are you hearing me? God is not through with you yet. Because if God can do what he's done with us, there is nothing God will not do. I, you see, man of God, when God blessed our family, eh, it wasn't because, sometimes God blesses one person in the family. It's, so everybody looks up to, that, that is not us. None of us wait for anybody to do anything. God blessed every one of us completely, totally, and absolutely. That is my mom's driver. Every, he, he, if I'm lying, he's here. Can you rise up on your feet, please? I have a couple of minutes. I want you to take a journey down memory lane and remember where he brought you from and give God praise. Just take a few minutes and thank God. If for nothing at all, the fact that the obituary you read was not yours. The psalmist said in 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. The only prerequisite necessary for you to praise God is the fact that you have breath in you. Lift up your voice and thank God. There is somebody in the ICU right now, I'm telling you, with all kinds of holes in their nostrils and in their mouth, they wish they would have this moment just to give thanks to God. for you. May that be your story. 
May that be your narrative. May God change your story. May you have a cause to stand one of these days and testify about the goodness of God. Some of you, you don't understand. God is pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. And you don't know. You can't understand why God is pushing you so far. He's bringing you that much shame. Because for your shame, he will bring you a double portion. He's, he's exposing all these things about you. So humanity will see that the lowest part of your life. Because he's going to lift you up. And when he lifts you up, people must know you're before. So they can appreciate your after. Somebody, listen, 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 listen. Until you are able to remember. See, if you are forgetful, write things down. Job said, he said, Job said, write it down. The things you are seeing me go through. He said, write it down. He said, why? Because my story will change. Because I know my redeemer lives. So write the negative. Listen, when God is shaming you, embarrassing you, don't hide it. Let humanity see it. They have to see where you are coming from to appreciate where God has brought you. It's okay for your shame. It's okay for your disgrace because your story will change. I prophesy to somebody this morning, your story will change. Your story will be rewritten. This is not where God said he was going to take you. Whatever you are seeing, it is temporary. Your story will change. Please welcome your servant. Welcome the servant of the Most High. Hallelujah. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. Hallelujah. You know when uh, God's servant said, just before he went to his chair, he said, your story will change. I didn't like the way you responded your amen. I've told you time and again, when in time, you know, such prophetic word goes out, your amen is simply to say to God, I agree with what you are saying. The man of God kept repeating, your story will, amen, amen. We can't like be that. I joined my faith with him and I prophesy, your story will change before 35. I say your story will change before 35. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed this morning? Come on, put your hands together. Let's appreciate God servant. Come on, celebrate. Reverend Kingsley Ayensu, what a word. What a word. Wow. We are going to take our offerings shortly, but